Hey guys, Teenzeen16 here. Um, I tried doing some gameplay uh, videos, but they haven't uploaded for whatever reason. Um, it was shot live and it's supposed to be transferred over here, but apparently not. Um, anyways, um, I was gonna shave this off, but I didn't do that yet kinda lazy. Uh leg has been killing me. So anyways, just gonna do this video, then shave, then probably do another video. Um my thoughts on Tony Romo is simply he's in my opinion, in all honesty, even though people question it, is I believe he is the guy to run the Cowboys and I honestly feel like if anyone says that the reason we lose is strictly on Tony Romo or the reason we haven't had playoff success is because Tony Romo I wish would shut up and stop talking about football. They're probably just Texans who would enjoy seeing the Cowboys in the playoffs and winning but don't follow them up and when they see Tony Romo do bad they want to blame it all on him. I believe true football fans, and especially true Cowboy fans, know that the reason why he isn't that good, mainly this in particular, this year in particular, even though he almost had 5,000 uh, passing yards, is simply because he was running for his life nearly every single play. He was either being hit or knocked down on every single play. So how can you expect a quarterback to have playoff success when the only years we've had a good offensive line was the year we went 13 and 3 which was I believe in 2008 cuz I believe we went either 11 and 5 or 10 and 6 in 2009 um those years we didn't have a running game so we relied on Tony Romo too much and we didn't really get that far um, the playoff game we lost in Seattle, everyone blames on Tony Romo, but people don't realize that Bill Parcells is the one that told Tony Romo to be the placeholder. So, everyone cuts on Tony Romo for that, even though Bill Parcells is the one who told him to go get on the field. Um, I don't know if Bill Parcells was thinking, let's get this field goal win the game, and Tony Romo was on the field for that experience or something along those lines. I don't know. I'm not him. Um, 2009. Well, I, and one thing I want to say after this is in 2009, the way we sealed the loss was the end zone interception. Um, I can't remember who made the interception. Um, second, and secondly, in that game, it went up to Hail Mary. One of the Giants defenders batted the ball back, and I think it was number 13 or 17 who was a wide receiver the ball fell right in front of him all he had to do was drop down and catch the ball or dive for it because there's no one in front of him or beside him to prevent him from catching the ball so it was still kind of catchable so we could have made a miracle catch like that but I don't really blame the loss on the Giants or the Seahawks or at least I can't be that mad because at least we didn't lose to like a crappy team we lost to the Seahawks the Seahawks went to the Super Bowl we lost to you know, the Giants, they beat the undefeated Patriots that year. So at least we lost to people that went to the Super Bowl. And the other team we lost to is the Vikings, who didn't go to the Super Bowl, but at least they went one game uh, close to the Super Bowl, which was a very kind of close game as well for the Vikings in the Saints game. Or I think it was. I'm not sure. I can't really remember that much on that year. Um, so anyways... We have a running team, or at least we could have a running team with DeMarco Murray. We have Des Bryant, we have Jason Witten, Dwayne Harris is kind of coming up as a probably a, a third receiver. The only thing we need to fix is Miles Austin and that hamstring that he's been bad in like for two seasons. Um, I don't know what's wrong with his conditioning. He had a hamstring issue last season that prevented him from doing good. He had a hamstring this year. They're talking about uh, getting rid of him, so it helps us up. Sat I can't talk. It's one in the morning. 
um, salary cap. And last year I've been a little bit furious because it says Bryant um, didn't have a full season. And now that I've seen what Des Bryant could do with a full season, and he didn't play the full season healthy either with a broken finger plus hamstring issues at the beginning of the year, um, playing through complete emotional distraught with the whole mother issue that I'm not really going to go into because I wasn't there. I'm not going to say he was a bad player or he was guilty or not guilty. I don't want to see any comments about it because you weren't there either. You know, it's all hearsay, so it's no point in us talking about it. Um, so after seeing what he can do, what Dwayne Harris is capable of, um, uh, Cole Beasley even though he's small, has made some really impressive plays here and there. Miles Austin is playing like a backup wide receiver or a fourth or fifth string who comes out when the starters and the third string wide receivers are tired getting a drink of water or whatever. That's what he's been playing like the flat past few years. He's made... A key, the only key play I can think of him making is probably the touchdown in Carolina and the touchdown that basically got us into overtime against the Saints on that uh, fourth and very long touchdown catch that he made. But he was wide open, so it's not like he did anything spectacular anyways. Um, so, all I can say is we could trade down to get probably Warmack or maybe Lane Johnson, I believe his name is, from Oklahoma, and these are offensive linemen, and really, we don't even have to trade up to get one. Um, I've been watching the Combine all weekend, and I can say that this is the year of the offensive linemen. Um, I don't believe I've ever witnessed this many linemen that could have, or should be starting on any team they get drafted to. Um, as far as offensive guards and tackles, I haven't really seen anything from centers, but the guards and tackles this year, this is the year to get one. Um, what I would like to see done is to draft a either a guard or a left tackle and move... Um, crap, I can't remember think of his name. Tyron Smith moved him back to right tackle. I think he was much more comfortable at the right tackle position than the left tackle. Get a guy who's used to the left tackle position and move him to left tackle. And, you know, get rid of Doug Free. Doug Free caused so many... <laughs> I don't know how many times we've had neighbors bang on the walls because we live in apartments, because we're yelling, because Doug Free doesn't even touch a defensive lineman and just completely obliterates Tony Romo's blind side or letting him kind of go up the gut and put pressure right in Tony Romo's face. Doug Free needs to go, both the guards need to go, and the center needs to go. And realistically, there's probably some offensive linemen who are probably going to fall into the second round that still have starting qualities. So. We could that we should trade up a little bit and either get into the late first round or upper second round, and we could realistically get a guard and a tackle and fill both of those positions in the first two rounds. Or what I would like to do is that's one thing I would like to do. Another thing is to obviously get a guard or a tackle in the first round, obviously. And because Tony Romo is kind of getting up in age and he's taking too many hits, and I don't see him staying in the league as long as a Tom Brady or Peyton Manning or definitely not a Brett Favre. Um, probably get a quarterback and let Tony Romo cut, catch him up because as far as mobilizing in the pocket and avoiding sacks, look at the Giants game where four guys hit him or back a few years ago in the Atlanta game. when You have to definitely wrap him up. If you just get one arm on Tony Romo, he can avoid it and scramble out of it and make plays down the field. And if you could teach that to a rookie, then that'd be great. Um, so that's one thing I would definitely like to try to do as a uh, complimentary to Tony Romo to let him coach up and when he w wants to retire or if he has to retire due to injuries because that's what it looks like is going to happen with any quarterback that comes into Dallas. Um, so yeah, and realistically, 
we may not win a Super Bowl with Tony Romo, but if Tony Romo is still in the league, if he's with the Cowboys or not, I personally, because I invested a lot of trust and support to Tony Romo and the Dallas Cowboys ever since he's took over from for a... Uh, I believe it was either Drew Hansen or Bledsoe that had a terrible game, and they benched him for Tony, and Tony Romo just went out and amazed everybody. Um, I believe then, and I still believe now, if we win a Super Bowl, there isn't a quarterback in the NFL or college that's coming into the league that I want to go to the Super Bowl with the Cowboys and win than Tony Romo. That's how I honestly feel, and if Tony Romo is in the league somewhere and we go to Super Bowl and win, it'll be bittersweet because, honestly, I would love nothing more than to have Tony Romo win a ring with Dallas, in all honesty. And a lot of people think I'm crazy and a lot of people agree, but, you know, a lot of people just don't like Tony Romo, but they don't blame him either, which I'm completely okay with. But like I said previously, for people to blame everything on Tony Romo when Tony Romo is in control of the defense, he's not in control of the offensive line, not blocking. Um, you know, I, I can't sit here and say that everything is on Tony Romo's fault, you know. Um, the Bears game, I'm not going to say anything on it because the Bears had the most turnovers and probably one of the best defenses in NFL history. Um, our offensive line just got eaten up in that game. So, yeah. Uh, in other news, I guess I could talk about uh, free agency right quick. Um, I don't know why, but I'm seeing all over um, groups and stuff on Facebook. I'm seeing a lot of people that I follow on Twitter talking about getting Reggie Bush and letting Reggie Bush be the starter. Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind getting Reggie Bush as a comp complimentary back behind Murray because Felix Jones hasn't done squat. Um, so people that see this video, um, regardless if you're a fan of me or not, even though I only have three videos up, um, a lot of people may recognize my face because I had a few other YouTube channels that I have previously deleted due to making intros to videos using um, songs and stuff that was copyright and penalized my time. Um, leave a comment, tell me what you think about, or how you feel about Tony Romo and about the uh, Reggie Bush thing that people are kind of talking about, and also the possible release of Miles Austin to help the salary cap. Um, so that's all for now guys. Uh, thank you for watching and leave a comment on your thoughts. Uh, bye.